Hi guys, Jace here and Happy New Year. Let's address the elephant in the room. This and this t-shirt. Christmas present from the kids. So yeah, I'm wearing them. I have got some spare caps. So to celebrate the 500 subscription mark, the first five people that comment below and also contact me by my email with their contact addresses, I will send them a cap if you want a cap. They're actually quite good quality. Today we're going to talk about marathon mountain bike race prep and I've got a big race in a week's time, the Wacker 100. So we'll be drawing on my experiences and also how I'm going to prep for this race. First of all, I will say I'm not an expert, but this is based on my experience and also some research. So it will be brief, it can be exhaustive and it can take a long time to talk about this subject, but I will keep it as brief as I can. You can make training very complicated. So I'll try to simplify things and you don't need to make it complicated. Build endurance and aerobic fitness by doing longer rides. This will also help you be more efficient on the bike. You can also train your sweet spot, which is 88 to 92% of FTP and build those intervals up, up to two hours. Next, what I would do once you've got your efficiency sorted and your longer rides or you've got that base to build on then you need to speed up so by doing this you need to do intervals of vo2 and threshold now this will help you ride faster and get used to riding faster and not just building that volume now that was a loose structure but structure your training if you can and you can do this by using a third party software apps such as trainer road and they will develop a plan for you on the system you won't even have to think about it so you can do indoor rides or outdoor rides on your garmin or wahoo and that will bring you all the way up to race day improve your technical riding if it's a technical course just get out there and ride especially when you're about a month out into the race that will give you more specificity that will help you along with your training and no doubt that will help your times come tumbling down. Don't forget to train your weak spots. So if your weak spot after a few hours on the bike is a sore neck or sore elbows or if you've got a sore back, don't forget to stretch, don't forget to do some core stability or strengthen those areas that you're weak at. Because after five or six hours on the bike, you're certainly gonna ache in places that you didn't think possible before. Finally, let's talk about the taper. Now, the general rule of a taper is to reduce the volume and maintain the intensity. So probably up to about two weeks before, start reducing the amount you're riding, but try to keep the intensity up. So still do those interval sessions. Make your last session of probably about four days before the race, three or four days before the race. And then the day before the race, do some openers just so you can get race prepped and race ready and your muscles and your body primed for that race. Now, everyone is different. I'll caveat that. So just practice this. If you haven't done that, basically the guidelines are reduce volume and maintain the intensity and give yourselves a few days rest before the race. Of course, you need to train more than your fitness. You need to train on how to maintain your bike because I've suffered from that consequence in the past. Last year I had a mechanical on the Wacker and I had to drop out. I had a race brain and couldn't fix my chain, which broke. Um, so I did practice fixing that train, uh, tra chain afterwards and I'm a little bit more confident I will be able to do that or a lot more confident that I will be able to fix it in the race next week. Thoroughly research the route because basically that's gonna dictate what training you're gonna do. Have a look at the maps online, look at the elevation, look at how much technical riding there is, and also try to work out how long it's going to take. Now you can do that by looking at past results. Also, you can do that by looking at local riders, checking them out on Strava, see how fast they did it, and compare them with yourself. Ride sections of the trail if it is at all possible. If not, just have a look online at some videos like the ones I've made and then you can probably sit on the trainer and hopefully get into how technical they are. I also commentate over some of them, so it gives you a decent idea. I've also got some overlays on top. Now let's look at the equipment. First of all, the bike. Now here's my bike. 
It's just started raining, so I'll show you the bike when, with it inside. I've just picked it up from the bike shop, so it's all nice and shiny and working well, race ready. It's 120 front and back. Now, if you want a full review of the Noco Revolver, just click up the top there, because I've done a video on that. Differences probably, uh, I've changed the front and rear tires, Racing Ralph rear, Racing Ray front, 2.35s. And I normally, pressure-wise, 21 rear, 20 front. I've got the Wahoo computer, I've got the TOGS, thumb over grip system here, as you can see. And these are my new SRAM G G2 brakes and that I've just had to install because one was broken. So good job I went into the shop. Here are the spares that I will carry. They'll mostly go on my bike. You can see these two straps. There'll be a link above for the review of the straps. Also then I've got my Crank Brothers Multi-Tool. There's also a review. I've done a video on this as well. I've got my tubeless dart system. I haven't done a review on this because I never had a puncher. I've also got an air canister, spare tube, tubo light, a couple of tire levers, and also don't forget a spare hanger just in case I put that in the bike bag. Everything else will go on my bike. The final thing I carry is a quick link to fix my chain. And I tape this up and then place it onto my brake cable. Good job I checked because my brakes have been changed and it wasn't on there. And here it is, just nice and discreetly on the brake cable so you can hardly see it. Anything you can control on the bike, do that a good few weeks before the race. About two weeks before the race, stuff that you can't do and it's out of your technically skill level, book it into the bike shop and get them to have a look at it. And what they have found is I have actually got a broken break and um, everything's kind of broken on it they think it may be sorted under warranty but i've got to order a new set of brakes so i was lucky i found that out and it didn't fail during the race would have been a disaster also the clothing here's the clothing i'm going to be wearing uh, it looks a bit of a mess but we'll go through it slowly starting off from the head to the toes now helmet it's a Giro mips helmet it's very lightweight. Yes, it's a road one. And the reason I wear a road one is because it's lighter and the padding is the thinner. It's got lots of air going through it. So it's cooler. And when I sweat, the padding doesn't collect all the sweat. So it is lighter. I will have my U-Sweep pack with a two liter pack on and of course the camera in the front. Next on top, I have a base layer and this is really thin and mesh. You may or may not be able to see that, but it's very thin and you can almost see through it. And that just wicks away the sweat. So that's where I wear that, it makes it more comfortable. Now the top is also very lightweight. Yes, it's Lycra and I wear Lycra because it is so much lighter, so much more comfortable. And if it's wet or you're sweating, if you don't wear Lycra, you know, you tend to, the clothes tend to hold that sweat and it weighs you down a little bit and it, and it becomes more uncomfortable. So I found Lycra when I'm racing, pretty much only when I'm racing uh, on a mountain bike is when I use it. But I had practice in it, I've worn it before and it works really well and it's so much more comfortable. Now the shorts, bib shorts. I've got two pairs here. Uh, normally I would wear these Rafa ones with the pockets in the side. So I can put my nutrition or any extras or my dart uh, to fix my uh, tire in there. But I may not this year because I've hardly got any nutrition that I'm carrying. So I can carry it in my Lycra in the back. And that's another reason to wear Lycra with the nice pockets in the back of the shirt. So I'll probably wear this. Always got a good chamois, really good chamois in this and it fits really well and it fits tightly and it's good Lycra. On the hands, got a nice pair of 100% eye track gloves. Really light weight, really um, comfortable and they hardly feel as though you're wearing gloves at all. So, and I like that. Let's not forget the socks. I've got some Mons Royale socks here. Uh, they're merino so they wick the sweat away and they're reasonably lightweight but they are comfortable glasses got a 
pair of Oakley radars and I use the photochromic lenses. So if the weather changes during the day, then these are perfect for that. And also they're fine because they darken up when it's light and lighten up when it's dark. So they tend to react pretty well to the forest. The only problem with their wearing glasses, especially if you don't get the airflow, is that they can steam up or your sweat gets in the way and they get filthy. And finally, my cross country S work shoes. Um, I have them with both. I have problems with my shoes because my feet are quite wide through here. So I get the ones with bow dials, which make it a lot more comfortable. That is my kit. Any questions or if you carry any different kit or if you've got any tips for anyone else, put it in the comments below. Nutrition, it's pretty big. It's a big subject. Everyone's an individual. Everyone is different. So try to work out a strategy that works for you. And as I said before, try to do that in minor races or during training. I've had a few problems with it in the past. And if you click up here at the Lake Howea Epic, you can see me throwing up and having problems with my stomach during that race. And I have since um, looked cl more closely at my nutrition strategy and worked out a one that works better for me. Research has shown that the stomach can tolerate about 60 grams per hour with a simple sugar such as glucose, just one sugar. However, if you do combine them such as glucose and sucrose, then your stomach can tolerate up to about 90 grams of carbohydrates an hour. So try to find a food source that will do that from liquid. I use Tailwind Nutrition, the flavors are great. It's pretty natural, gluten-free, uh, vegan-friendly, um, dairy-free. So it's pretty good for your stomach and you shouldn't have any gut bombs. They do come also in caffeinated and non-caffeinated, which is, which is also a pretty good plus. Two scoops of Tailwind in 500 milliliters of water contains 50 grams of carbohydrates. And I will generally drink on a hot day 750 mils of water so i'll get 75 grams of carbohydrates in an hour for my race just liquids only here is my nutrition strategy during the race nutrition so much simpler than it was last year look at how many bars and gels and everything i had to carry around with me last year this year i'm going to start off with a gel 10 minutes before the race just to top up your glycogen levels that's about 25 or so grams of carbohydrates. Then I've got eight scoops of Tailwind. This is mandarin orange in a two liter pack, 200 grams of carbohydrates. I carry with me an empty bottle. Now that empty bottle isn't quite empty because it's got a Tailwind stick in it with another 50 grams of carbs. I carry these blocks just for emergencies, just in case I need another pickup, but that is 50 grams of carbs. So that is the first half of the race done. I'm not carrying this around with me because it's in a drop bag at the second half of the race. So this will be in my drop bag. Another two litre pack with another eight scoops and 200 grams of carbohydrates. This time it's Colorado Cola. Also, I will have another empty bottle and another stick with another 50 grams. And also another emergency box with 50 grams. Right at the end of the race, don't forget your tailwind recovery shake just before your beer. So carbohydrates, we've got 25 just before the start, 300 for the first half of the race, 300 for the second half of the race, 625 in total. I'll divide that by eight if I'm gonna do it in eight hours. That gives me 78 grams of carbohydrates an hour, which is within my range really of tolerance. So that is pretty good. And I may even have a little snack of something solid at the halfway mark. So that will top that up. So. Plenty and nice and simple. Let me know what you think of the nutrition strategy and what you do in the comments below. Our nutrition starts a good few days before the race, so make sure you increase your carbohydrate intake. And also don't forget to hydrate and drink lots of water a couple of days before the race. Now, on race morning, make sure you have a good breakfast one to four hours before the race and high on carbohydrates. What I do and what I found that works for me is have pancakes with some fruit and some yogurt. And 
along with some maple syrup on top of that. And finally, have some fun out there. Don't forget to have some type one fun as well as type two fun. And enjoy the occasion, have a chat with your fellow competitors and really enjoy a beer at the end. Now, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again soon for my race recap of the Wacker 100.